Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make this cool geometric illustration website. So we're going to go through creating the wireframe for the website, but more importantly, how to create this geometric illustration. These are really cool. They're nice and colorful and they're pretty unique. So let's go ahead and dive right into today's Adobe XD tutorial. All right, so I've got a blank artboard, a 1920 by 1080 artboard, and I've just filled it to white for now. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn on our layout grid and just drop that opacity down to about 10% or so, just so we can see through it a little bit better there. So we're gonna go ahead and set up the basic wireframe for this. So first I'm gonna go ahead and add the navigation and then the content on the left, and then we'll get started with the geometric illustration. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag out a rectangle here and then I'm going to put it in the top left corner and drag it all the way over to the right hand edge and we'll set that to 90 pixels high. So inside of this rectangle is gonna be our navigation. So let's go ahead and add a logo. So I'm just gonna use the type tool, press T on the keyboard and we'll just call that track, center it up inside the rectangle and I'm gonna put it on this second hand column Today I'm gonna to use the SF Pro display font. This is from the Apple UI kit. And I'm gonna set this to 26 point. And we'll change that to a black weight for a really thick font. And again, make sure it's centered vertically there inside of that rectangle. On the right hand side, we're gonna have our nav links. So we're gonna start here on this second column again. Grab the type tool. Zooming in here, I'm gonna set each of these to 20 point and we'll bump those down to a medium weight, right align them, and then we'll make sure it's centered vertically inside of this rectangle. Hold Alt and click and drag on that to create a duplicate. I'm gonna put a 70 pixel gap in between each of my links. I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the rest of these links. Now for the main heading and call to action over here on the left hand side of this hero, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the type tool, type in some junk text. I'm going to align it to the left. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have about an H4 sized font on top of our larger heading. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that 20 point. This time I'm gonna go with a heavy weight and just paste that text in. I'm gonna make this all capital by selecting the large TT down here at the bottom. And then let's add some character spacing to this to make this stand out a little bit more. We'll go with 150 just to stretch that out. And I'm going to touch this onto this third column here on the left. With T on the keyboard once more, I'm gonna drag out a text area this time and just paste in some text. This is gonna be our H1, which is gonna be extremely large. So we're gonna set that to a 97 point. And I'm gonna go with a medium weight. And then I'm gonna remove that character spacing as well. And then now that this is a text area, we can double click on the bottom to fill that. And let's add a little bit less of the line height. So maybe 107 and then we'll stretch this out, do something like that, and then double click on the bottom anchor point here to snap that. I'm gonna drag this up below that H4 sized font. So we have our heading four, 10 points above our H1, which is our largest heading, and then we're gonna have a paragraph down here, so I'll drag out another text area. Our paragraph text is going to be 18, Go with regular weight and then 30 for the line height. Paste in a bit of lorem ipsum and double click on the bottom to fill that paragraph out. I'm just gonna visually drag this until I get a width that I like that matches this heading and we'll put that about 40 points below. And the last thing I'm gonna need over here is a button. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and drag one out. And then inside of that, we're gonna have some text. And for this text, we're going to go with 18 points once again. Bald that. And let's add 200 character spacing just to stretch that out even further than this one up here. Gonna center align that and then type in some text. Give it a try. And then let's also make that all capital. I'm gonna click and drag to select the rectangle and the text and we'll just center that together. And then Command G to group that. When we have that grouped, we're gonna go select the padding. And once we've toggled that on, we'll go with 25, 55, 25, 55, to give us a nice size button there. And then we'll put this 50 points below the paragraph. 
And then I'm gonna select all of this, make sure it is aligned to the left so everything is nice and aligned. And to align this, I'm gonna delete this rectangle now that we have everything the way we want it. And I'm going to hold Alt with all of this selected and hover over track our logo. And we have 140, let's bump that up to 130. So 130 points or 191 from the top of the artboard there. And that looks pretty good. Now for the geometric illustration. So what I do for this is I grab a square and I just hold shift as I drag that out and I'm gonna put it here in the bottom right hand corner. So each one of these squares is going to house a shape to make this pattern. So what I'm gonna do is put these squares in a pattern here on the edge. So I'm gonna use repeat grid for this. So I'm just gonna drag this out until I have four of these with a zero pixel gap in between them. And then I'm also gonna do four rows. So I'll just do one, two, three, four with a zero point gap. Command shift G, or you can go up to the top and ungroup that grid. And we have these squares. So I'm gonna put these in the bottom right hand corner again. And then on the top, I'm gonna to delete these two and we'll go with three, three, four. So each of these is gonna have a different shape inside of it. So I'm going to create another artboard, same size as our main artboard there. And I'm just gonna drag one of these over here. So in my pattern, I want to have, let's see, maybe three, four shapes. So for the first one, I'm gonna select this and go to the border radius and select this icon so we can set one of these to 1000. That's just gonna round it into this shape. So it looks good. I'm gonna hold Alt and drag over to copy that. And then reset that back to a square. Then I'm going to grab another rectangle, rotate it to a 45 degree. And then we're gonna use that to cut this one into a shape like that. And it's important that you make sure that all these are exactly the same size. So these are 203 by 203. So this one needs to be exactly that as well so that they all link up properly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna continue until I have a bunch of these different shapes. And I think these are the four shapes that I'm gonna go with for now. So now that we have these four shapes, we can start to fill in these squares with these shapes. So I'm just gonna drag this to a spot where I can easily copy these. Let's go ahead and turn off that grid so we can see a little bit better. So I'm just going to hold Alt every time I click on one of these and drag it over. And I'm just going to put these into the squares and then delete the squares behind them. So let's grab one of these, flip it around. And it's kind of just like making a puzzle here. Just put them in any order that you want and you can use any shape that you want and it creates a cool looking pattern by the end. All right, now that I have these in a decent pattern, I'm just gonna select all of them, remove the border, and we'll just change these to a light gray for now. And what I wanna do now is start to overlap some of these so they make some interesting shapes. So I'm gonna grab one of these triangles and I'm going to put this one over top of this kind of curved shape. So I'm gonna bring that to the front with command shift right square bracket key so that it's completely on top of this shape. So if we just make this a darker shade, you can see that we have that nice overlap. And then I'm also gonna make this one this, so you can see these two triangles as well. And then let's put one of these behind this curve shape. And we'll make that that darker color so you can see it. I'm gonna grab one of these, rotate it, and we'll put that behind this triangle shape this time. Command shift left square bracket key to send that all the way to the back and we'll change the color so you can see it. So now we have some interesting overlaps which just makes the pattern look a little bit more detailed. So from here we have our wireframe finished. So I'm gonna select this artboard and hit command D to create a duplicate and we'll just call this design and this is version one. So to finish off our design, the first thing I'm gonna do is select all of my text and just fill that with a solid black, or you can go with a close to black if you don't like using solid blacks. And then with the paragraph text, we're gonna drop that down to 50% opacity. 
as well as the links that are not selected. So we're on the home page. So these will be 50%. And then I'm gonna put a dot below the home so that we know where we are. So we'll just drag out a circle holding shift. And let's make that about six by six. I'm gonna center that up and put that four pixels below. And we'll fill that with that black color. So now we have that. And for our button, I'm going to remove the border. And for now, I'm gonna fill it to black and change the text to white. So to finish this up and add some color, I have these color swatches that I got from my favorite color website. I might be making a video overviewing this soon since it was just rebuilt. Uh, but for now, I have a screenshot of the colors I want to use. So I'm just gonna go through and change all of these shapes to various different colors. So we'll just select some of these holding shift and then we'll fill them with the red color and then we'll grab some of them to be green. Let's go with those and maybe those and drop those to green and then the rest will automatically go to yellow. Just like that. And so now we have a pretty cool geometric pattern over here. So I'm gonna select all of these and just scale them up now that I have a good shape, just to fill out a little bit more of this page. Put it around there. So each of those just went to 240, it looks like. And then I'm also gonna select this entire navigation and we're 30 points from the top. So I'm gonna actually drop that down to maybe 40. Actually, let's go with 50, that looks a little better. Just to get some space there. And we'll fill in this button rectangle to red and then this text up top will go to red as well. And then I'm gonna take this text for the logo and drop it to 50% opacity, just cause I don't like how much it's standing out. And then we'll take this page indicator, make it stand out a little bit more as well. Maybe drop it down another point or two there. Go to the live preview, that looks pretty good. So that is step by step of how to create one of these websites with these geometric illustrations over here on the side. Just create some squares and put whatever you want into them and just kind of match them up like puzzle pieces and then you can play around with overlapping some on top of others. You can go with various different shapes. They don't have to be the ones I use. Feel free to get creative and use your own color schemes. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. Subscribe for more design related content and as always, have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next one.